Hi and welcome to Serverless Meets Meraki, Stop Your Building Syncing with Modern Web Applications. And thank you for the privilege of being able to share this talk with you today. My name is Charles Greenaway and I work for BT, one of the largest secure communications providers in the world as a customer CTO. My role is focused on using technology to find practical and sustainable ways to help our customers succeed. This presentation will focus on how we can add value using modern web applications. We'll spend a few minutes on some concepts, introduce the technologies and how we glue them together, and then finish with a couple of demonstrations. The applications used within an organization are critical to their business functions. They connect to users, partners, and most importantly, customers. It used to be that the data and the apps were confined to a data center where the access was policed and governed by a perimeter firewall but that's all changed. Applications are distributed, data is everywhere. We consume platforms and services from multiple sources to bring together new value propositions to our customers. There is competition at every level, so let's break that down. Let's start with a product and assume it has an application programming interface, an API. This is the foundation of building a digital experience. It's how mobile applications users other business services and products would interact with this product. The API defines resources, how to interact with it, the verbs. So for example, I send a GET request to it, that's retrieving data from it. And if I send a, a POST or a PUT, that's making a change. Now these methods and verbs are well published, but it hides the interior mechanics of how that product operates. A well-defined API adds value by allowing anybody with the right permissions to be able to access it. Who you are determines what you can do. Some vendors have already written um, direct integrations for some products, for example, um, ServiceNow and Splunk. With some products and services, you can get connectors which allow ServiceNow to directly interact with it and enhancing the value of both ServiceNow and the product. Now, if I was going to select a workflow engine or a seam or a security product to interact with my product suite, I want to know that they can integrate together and likewise, I'm going to select new products in the future. I want them to integrate with the wider ecosystem of my operations so it becomes sticky on both sides. Interoperability and modularity, being able to interface with an API is not only very important but business critical. Generally speaking, there are opportunities to add extra value to our products and services and we can even leverage someone else's you know, to add value and create new sales opportunities. New, new ideas and innovation can create synergies across complex ecosystems by gluing them together, putting a wrap around them, and then that complexity can be hidden so we can simplify the user experience and get the customer to that additional value. If our services are easy to consume, then we become part of the customer's ecosystem embedded within their robotic process automation, a key component of their digital experience. So. Our specific use case for it will be a web application to govern a flood defense system. So think of a data center that has raised floors or hard to reach spaces or a place with expensive equipment or heavy machinery. You know, in the event of a flood, a stock would be destroyed. We have a sensor in the floor and as the flood water begins to rise, the sensor detects the water and raises the alarm. But we want to log the event. We want to know where that event is. We want to tell people that there is a problem. But also we want to initiate an automated response. So this is where we link some kind of control system, an industrial pump, for example. And we want to start pumping the water out to buy, buy some time or resolve the problem altogether. Once the problem is cleared, we want to be able to turn the pumps off and tell people about that too. Now, this could be done locally, but to make the app development sustainable, we need to think about scale. How do we manage sensors and devices in a repeatable way? This is going to be achieved by taking um, two platforms and adding our own smarts. One platform to govern the sensors and the other will govern the response. And the sensor platform will be Cisco Meraki using their MT sensors to detect the water and send an alert. For the control, we're going to use an IoT solution, in this case, Greengrass version 2 from AWS. And in the middle, we'll use an AWS serverless application to glue them together. Cisco Meraki offers cloud managed networking cameras and sensors amongst other things. The Meraki dashboard offers a centralized API, which means I can interact with it and ask questions of my infrastructure. I can provision new things. In this case, I need to get webhooks out of it 
So there is an alert I can fire to other parts of the platform. The cameras themselves are powered over ethernet, which makes them very easy to place. But they also double up as Bluetooth low energy gateways. So that means I can take a sensor which is battery operated and it will home against the nearest gateway. Now, naturally, there would be concerns around security. The Meraki sensors have a trusted anchor module embedded within them with an X509 certificate. And the certificate is keyed on the serial number and it's not exportable. When I push the button and it registers against the gateway, an administrator has to admit the sensor to the inventory for it to work. To manage the controls of the physical interfaces, like water pumps, we're using AWS Greengrass version 2, which is an IoT solution. We're predominantly using that for fleet management. In the context of flood defense, that works, but Greengrass is capable of so much more. Over the air updates, software management, fleet management, pushing containers, pushing new software, the list goes on. But specifically, we're using it to provision the software in a secure manner and be able to send instructions to and from that device to control the physical world. The Greengrass framework allows us to send instructions and software updates and receive telemetry over reliable and unreliable networks. So whilst the application is fixed, we're in a building, we could extend it to places that are hard to reach or control devices that don't need to be powered on all the time. This means our connectivity portfolio right across the spectrum can apply to the solution. Bringing all this together, we're going to create a serverless application on AWS. This is great because we are not concerned with managing operating systems, virtual machines, infrastructure, anything that we'd normally do on premises. What we are concerned about is invoking the services as and when we need them and writing some code to bring all that together. Getting into specifics, uh, we're going to use DynamoDB as an object database, S3 to manage the images we push out to our controls, uh, Cognito for authentication, CloudWatch so we can see our logs and monitor what's going on, an API gateway to give us a presence on the internet and receive web hooks and to communicate out to other services. All of this is governed by the AWS permissions framework to make sure that the instructions between all these devices are secure. All of that can be wrapped up in a definition language, which enables us to push that out whenever we get a new customer. To deploy it is fully automated. The development of a serverless application is rapid. It's repeatable and, and the deployment can be automated. The cost model is utility-based. We pay for the invocations of Lambda functions, all the volumes of data in and out of a database, all the traffic in and out from the internet, so we are not burdened with the upfront capital expense before we prove the value of a concept. Now let's go through the operational flow. We start with the building that's fitted with a Meraki sensor that unfortunately begins to flood. So the water detection cable registers that there's a problem. It sends an alert back to the Meraki cloud, Meraki is instructed to send a webhook against our application. What happens here is Meraki checks that there's a valid certificate on the receive end. And assuming that's okay, it fires over uh, the payload with a pre-shared key. On the receive end, API Gateway checks the format of the message and the pre-shared key. But these two checks are done not just for security, but also for cost control. We pay for every invocation of a Lambda function or any state machine behind it. It's the secret source. We don't want a sensor to go off in London and activate the wrong sensor uh, or the wrong pump in, in say Paris or New York. Once we have the payload into the Lambda function, we extract the serial number and check our DynamoDB database to marry up the sensor with the control. This enables us to manage thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sensors of controls. From a network point of view, the Greengrass endpoints could be behind multiple layers of NAT and security. We rely on Greengrass to call home. And when a device lights up, it calls back and securely registers itself against multiple MQTT message queues. We know the relationship between an IoT controller and its sensor and its messaging queue. So now we can send the instruction to the controller to turn on the pump. The controller is listening on that queue. It triggers a physical relay to throw a switch and turn the, turn the water pump motors on. We have an automated response, which is great. But we want to tell people what's going on, send text messages, do voice alerts, put alarms into problems and incident management systems, and all of that can be done in the background. Once the water, le <coughs> Once the water level has dropped, uh, a similar flow happens. Meraki sends another webhook, the payload is processed, and we send an instruction to the control to stop. 
If we want to have local physical overrides, like a, like a big red button on the wall, we can do that too. One of the good things about serverless is that we can extend it. We can extend it. We can add new features as we go on. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we detect water using the MT sensor to trigger a response on a Raspberry Pi that's controlling a series of relays. So first up, we are going to go to the Meraki dashboard. Here we go, and we'll log in, we'll check our inventory. First thing I'm going to show you is the alert setting, because this is where we join the webhook uh, with Meraki. So as we join into the alert settings, I haven't filtered down on the default recipients because it's a test environment. But if we go down here on the HTTP servers, we can define a friendly name, which I've called test Meraki, Meraki handler 001, but that points to uh, the API gateway in Amazon with a pre-shared key. And a useful thing here is that I can send test webhooks as I'm proving the integration between the two. But I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to go to uh, our switch. Uh, our switch is an, an MS120. And that's where the, the camera is going to be connected. And the camera is attached and it uses Power Over Ethernet to power it. Just check that the camera is good. Yeah, so the MV22X. And that's acting as my Bluetooth gateway. And I've got two sensors online at the moment. And those two sensors, one is the MT10 and the other is the MT12. But what I've also got here is an alert profile also configured, and we'll go into that in a moment. So the two sensors here, so BT test knots, MT12, it's showing no water detected. And the temperature and humidity sensor we're not going to use during this demonstration, but you can see that it's there. Let's scroll that. There we go. And I've attached to an alert profile, and that's what gives the instructions of if there is an alert triggered, where does it go? So we go to the alert profiles tab, and we drill into the definition. Go edit. There we go. It's got the friendly name. It's always on. It's not scheduled. We can put these on at certain times. It's it's de configured to detect when when uh, when water is detected. Uh, I've got two phone numbers configured, so Meraki pings directly, but I could always also fire a webhook into something else that sends text messages. But you can see the test Meraki handler, which I defined earlier as a defined webhook for this alert profile. Okay. Now I'm going to send a test message. So test webhook, that will do two things. It will hit my phone. So I've received the text message on my phone, and we'll just zoom in on that. So yeah, this is a test notification. But it's also sending a webhook into the Meraki system as well. But the, the code I have there won't respond to test messages. Now, going into the sensors, we're going to do a live test. Uh, and I'm going to take, get some water ready in a moment. Um, here we go. So we identify the serial number. And this serial number is what's in DynamoDB, and that lines up with the MQTT channels that I'm using for my controls. And here's my control. So across the top edge, I've got some LEDs which indicate whether or not the relays, the four big blue boxes, are engaged. And those, those relays are the physical switches, so I can put four independent circuits on them. So now I've got no water detected. I'm going to take my cup of water and I put my uh, water detection cable in there, which I've done. I'll leave that there for a moment. We've now got water detected. And if I cut to the other camera, uh, we will see that we get a, there, all four relays are now on. So that's flipped the switch on all four of the blue boxes. So those four circuits are now closed, which will engage the camera. And there's the text message. Uh, and there we go. So we're detecting water on the top line there. So that's worked okay. So now what I need to do is, is get hold of my, uh, yeah, we were detecting water. I'm gonna get hold of my water detection cable, dry that off, my cloth here, and hopefully that will go dry. It's very sensitive cable, right? That's now dry. We've got no water detected and we should get another text message. There we go. There's my other text message. And we are not detecting water and is no longer alerting. So that's now cleared. And as you can see, the relays have now gone off.
This demonstration is going to show the end-to-end -end system. We've got the uh, Cisco Meraki MS120 power over ethernet switch, which is providing power to this MV22X camera. This camera also serves as the Bluetooth uh, gateway for the sensors, where we've got the MT12, which has got the water detection cable attached to it. And what I've got here is an example of a simulated cellar or underfloor system, say in a data center or a conjury. We have the water detection cable, which is slightly above uh, the ground, but uh, is able to detect water whenever anything touches it. And here we have the control system. We've got a series of pumps, which are connected to my IoT device, which is managed by uh, AWS Greengrass in this case. We've got a temperature and humidity sensor, which is the MT10, where we could also have other stimuli and, and other responses. So. This system, the, the IoT device, could be uh, battery powered or it could be on the mains, uh, but it is connected over the internet back to um, the, the command and control system. And that allows the webhooks that come from Meraki to go across, be received by the AWS API gateway, and then translate that once it's looked up the serial number of the device to the correct control and send a message to it using a secure MQTT channel. Now, to simulate this, I have some flood water uh, and with some uh, blue food coloring in it. I'm just going to pour it in here and we'll see what happens. So the water level begins to rise, it touches the cable. Leave that there for now. The water detection should be received by, by the device we should send the web, web hook across. So that's now engaged. It's now pumping the water out. The water line has dropped below the sensor detection cable, but the cable is actually quite sensitive. So it won't send a clear message until it's completely dry. So to work around that, I've got an external control, which will turn it off. Actually, it's a, it has detected that it's gone dry and it's turned itself off. So that's the end of the demonstration. Just do that one more time. System's now dry, we'll pour in the flood water. We should see the pumps engage. In summary, we've seen how we can bring together two different vendor technologies and add new value. We've shown the power of serverless applications to glue these technologies together. Most importantly, we did this fast and with minimal setup costs. We've shown that it could be extensible and it can add new features as you go. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found it useful.